Hello there. I'm back at this creating a solar light board video part three. I did a run through yesterday and it didn't go so well and uh, consequently I'm reshooting the whole thing but that's okay. I, I learned a bit and I was, I was stumbling around a bit because I've forgotten how to do some things. One thing I did do and I'll, I'll go over this at the end of this video is I did print out a sheet once I had gotten something that I was satisfied with on the screen. In this image here, you'll see what I mean. So the board on the left is the one I printed uh, a couple years ago. And the board on the right is the one I tried to remake. And you can see, if you look at the tracks, the tracks on the right are almost hairline. They're very, very small. Um, the, that's 0.2 millimeters, which is not good. It looks much bigger when you're actually working on the screen. So I need to make those tracks wider. And I did try to narrow up the board. And then I found with the narrowing, I didn't have a, quite enough room to run larger tracks. I'm looking to run something like 0.5 millimeter at least to 0.75 millimeters, something like that for track width. That, uh, that I definitely need to change. So this is why it's good to print this out. And I run into this with, even if you're printing like stuff for print production in real life, it looks much bigger on the screen. And then when you go to print it, it's either small or larger than you think, because until you actually have a print to look at in person, you might not really have an idea of what size it really is. And also, if you look at the connectors for the solar cell and the battery, those are a bit larger than I like. So I'd like to shrink those down some. But everything else, the uh, inductor, I, I like the size of that connection there. And I like the size of the diode. Everything else I'm happy with pretty much. I think the, um, the it, with the exception of the capacitor, I selected something like 7.5 millimeter. And I'm going to change that to something like a 4 millimeter or so. Because if you look at the photo on the left there, that's a little smaller than the LED. The LED is 5 millimeters. So I'm going to size that down as well. So there's a few changes I want to make before I send this off to production. So I'll go back to the schematic sheet here. I've got all my items placed on the sheet. And of course, if I do a 3D view, it's going to just show them. It's going to tell you the board outline is missing or malformed because we don't have an outline set. That's OK. So first order of business here is I want to change the track size. You're going to defaultly see this appearance and then layers. What you need to do is go to the nets here. I'm going to uh, click the settings here and that's going to bring up my net classes. And I want to change the default track width because 0.2 millimeters is very small and I'm aiming for at least 0.5 millimeters. Okay, click OK. So that should, now every time I run a track, it should be set to 0.5 millimeters, so half a millimeter width. Now I'm going to go back to the layers here. Okay, so there's a few layers that are necessary and some that aren't, depending on what you're doing. So you'll see this FCU is the front copper layer, uh, the BCU is the back copper layer. Then adhesive and paste, unless you're getting the boards put together by the fabricator, it's not important to have the adhesive and paste layers there. Uh, the silt screen layer, uh, that I do tend to use, so that's uh, a necessary layer if you want any writing or anything to be on the board. So you have front and back. Uh, it usually just, well, for a project like this, I'm just going to have the front, so that's all I need there. And then the other thing is the edge cuts. That is going to determine your board cutout shape. So uh, if you wanted a round board, you'd have a circular edge, for example. Or if you wanted some funky board, you'd have some weird setup. But that's going to be your outline of your board in the end. So that's an important one. And then not listed here. Not listed here is the drill file, but we'll cover that uh, at the end here. So what I want to do from the start is I want to go on my edge cuts here. And you can see this arrow denotes the layer you're working in at the moment. All right, what I'm going to do is draw the rectangle for my board outline. 
and I'm aiming for 42.5. It doesn't have to be exact in this case, but sometimes you want exact measurements. By 23. Close enough. Slightly longer, that's okay. Okay. Now if I go to 3D view, you can see that it's going to have an edge and it's determined by that rectangle I drew. All right, so got to change some footprints for sure. So I want to uh, bring up the footprint for the wires here. This should change both of them. Um, I'm going to go to change footprint here. And this is going to, I can select either change footprints or change footprints with the library ID. But since I selected the same footprints, I'm going to do uh, by library ID. That way I can change both of those. I just want to knock them down a little bit. So I'm going to bring up the footprint library here. And what I want to do is go down in size. Yeah, conductor diameter 1.25. That's pretty good size. So uh, let me see if I can go down. Hmm. I'm looking for, I think, Let's say 0.25 millimeter, quarter of a millimeter. Yeah, that should be okay, I think. So, yeah, two times 0 0.25 millimeter wires. I mean, my wires I use are fairly small, so definitely not one and a quarter millimeters. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and change those. All right, yeah, that's more like it. I'm happier with that size. That's better. Uh, also, the capacitor footprint, I need to change that as well. Uh, so we're going to do the change footprint again on that one as well. And the new footprint, we're going to go down to, I think, a 4. Point, let's go to 4.3 millimeters for the capacitor. Okay, change, close, all right. Now that should all be resized, and I think that's all I really want to do as far as resizing the footprint, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And next I'm going to move things around the board. Now R will rotate things around if you need to. Um, and you can see the wire nets here. Sometimes you want to rotate things around just so it lays out on the board better. And you want to, you might want to tweak things uh, as well. So, just sort of depends. What I like to do is not cross too many because in this
layout. Eventually, I'm thinking maybe I'll go with a single-sided board, so I'm just trying to keep that in mind if I want to change that in the future. Okay, so now that I've got things basically laid out where I want them, you can see here I've got one wire crossing there, and of course these aren't um, these ones here aren't really exactly telling us, but you can if you drag this around you'll see where where the wires are going, so it's not really too far off um, running parallel. Um, you can also play with it if you want to rotate it and see what happens with your wiring. Just whatever makes sense to you, whenever you whatever works for you on your layout as well. But I'm going to put those back. All right. Now, the other thing is I want to look at my silk screen items. Um, so what I'm going to do is go to the silk screen layer here. And I want to edit those. I want to say, I want to rename this one to battery. And then this one to uh, solar cell. And I also want to um, put a plus and minus symbol next to each one as well. So I'm going to click text here. Okay. I selected that one. I'm going to control C to copy, control V to paste, and I'm going to put one over here. Now I'm going to select the text tool again and do a negative symbol and then place that there. And again, select that, copy, control C, control V to paste. And put another one over there. And now if I go to View and 3D Viewer, you can see my changes here. So I've got positive and negative beside each of those locations. And then you can also see I've got a couple of silk screen items off the board here. So I'll relocate those as desired. Okay. I'm going to move this C1 down and same with the D1 and the K. And then the other thing I'd want to do uh, while I'm on the silk screen layer is mark pin 1. Uh, I have a square pin to denote that, but sometimes it's nice to be extra sure. So I'm going to use the draw line tool. and use that to mark pin 1. So now, if I go back to 3D Viewer again, we'll see that I've got a marking that denotes which way that angle cut in the chip is, and pin 1 on the connector as well. So there will be no question as to which way that goes on the board. Uh, the silk screen is mainly there to help you, so uh, there's two more changes I want to make. I want to move that K up just where that D1 is, just to make it look professional. And then I want to uh, change that D2 to LED.
me do 3D preview again. And that looks better. Okay, now I'm going to run the tracks. Fairly simple here. So I'm going to click on the track tool. And it's pretty neat how this works. So, for example, I'm going to take pin 4 on this chip here. And it, you see how it's showing me where to go here with that net line there. So I'm going to connect it there. And then uh, I want to, the ground I'm not too worried about, that's going to be a, a fill in here. But I will uh, select pin 3 here and that's going to tell me it wants me to connect it to the solar cell here. Now, you see the, where that green, when, when you have that green run in, that means you're too close. You're, you're within the margins of the other traces, so you got to have more space than that. There we go. I just sort of make it look however I want. Uh, run it, run it the way you like to, and you know, play with it. You can kind of experiment with different things and see which looks better to you. Uh, I'm I'm trying to leave sort of the center part open for drill holes for mounting the board. That's my goal there. I'm using Control Z a lot to do, to undo things. So. There we go. I, think I want to get that capacitor a little more in line. Just to make it look a little neater. Okay. So then the only nets I think I have left now are the ground, which is fine. And the other thing I'm going to do is use again the line tool. All right, I'm going to use the line tool to draw some lines here. This is going to be my safe drill area. Um, before I do that, I'm just going to have a look at 3D Viewer, see how things are looking. Uh, I'm going to use I'm going to move the L1 and the U1 a little bit, just to give me a little more playroom. So I'm going back to the silver screen layer and the U1 I'm going to move here and the L1 I'll move here. Okay, I'm happy with that. This is just so I have a little more room to play with for my um, drill area. I'm going to try to make it look in, as neat and nice as possible. So I'm doing a straight line up to about here.
Okay, now that's connected. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, and I'm, I think I'm on the silt screen, so that's going to, it'll make sense what I'm doing here shortly. So now I've made a silk screen area for my um, safe drill area here. Now I'm going to move the solar cell silk screen and battery silk screen down just a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. Okay, that looks good. I like it. Now, I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to click every single segment. There's not really a better way to, to grab all these, but I need to. And I'm going to right click on them and there is an option for grouping. I'm going to group these items. So that's going to group all those lines together. Now I can do control C and control V and now I have a copy of the whole thing. And it'll make sense what I'm doing here in just a moment. So I double clicked on that and you can see here now I have a layer it says silk screen. I'm going to change that to front copper layer. So I'm going to have three items that are the same shape and size. One's going to be the silk screen and the other is going to be a copper line. Okay, so now I'm moving the whole thing. I'm getting that lined up. So now I have a front copper layer with that. Now I'm going to control V again and that's going to give me a third one. And I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to change the layer on that to that copper layer. And that's going to give me the same thing on the back side of the board. All right. So now if you notice, I'll uncheck the silk screen and now below that I see the copper on the front of the board. And then if I uncheck the front copper layer, I will see the back copper layer on that board. So now I see that the same shape is on three layers. That's what I want and it'll make sense here shortly why I'm doing that. So I'm going to tick all of this back again. Put everything back visible, which is good. Do another view, everything looks good. And you can see my line on the back side here. All right. Now for the next step, we're getting very close here. I want to go on the front copper layer before I do that. Um, let's see, let's so we'll zoom in. Pick that right on the corner. Click front and back copper layers. Hit the ground. So that's going to select the ground now. And then I'm going to click OK. And now I've got this line that's following my cursor. And I'm going to tick that again in the bottom right corner. Or I'm going to tick that in the bottom left corner. Go across the bottom right corner. And then the top right corner. And then I want to right click and do close that line. Now what I've done here is I've drawn a ground zone fill for both the front and back copper layers. And they're denoted by this angled line on the outline there. So now what I do is right click and then zones and then I want to fill all zones. What that's done is filled in the ground planes on the top and bottom side of the board. Now I see I see one issue that's going to crop up and that's going to be this the I need to move this track here a little bit. So I'm going to hit control Z to undo my fill. 
and do my selection tool and select and delete this section of track here and I've got to get I've got to leave enough so that the ground fill can come in there all right now that should do it I hope so I'm going to right click again And then go to zones, fill all zones. And now the design rules are allowing that ground to get in there. So now those two release are connected. And of course, I've got a similar thing over here too. So I should lower this as well. Just some of the things you don't see right away until you're actually filling it in. Everything comes with practice, just takes time. Time and patience. Now, what, you know, what I've done here too is I've accidentally, I didn't need to run a track for ground. That's what's giving me a hassle here. I do. Okay. All right. Let's see how this works out now. Get carried away sometimes, that's all. Zones, fill all zones. Okay. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. Now, that should look pretty neat. So let's see, 3D Viewer. It's kept that, um, kept that ground plane out of my drill area. So the screws will just be going into fiberglass, uh, which is good. All right, so next I'll do a design rules check. So let's see what's going to happen. No, no issues. That's pretty good. Okay, I learned something. See? All right. So no issues with the design rule check. So the next step is uh, saving again, of course. What we have to do is get it ready for production. So there's uh, two items we're looking for, but we're going to click plot here. And you can see it's, you can do a few different formats. We're going to choose Gerber because that's what the PCB fabrication has is used. Um, and then you you can see all these layers here. Um, if they're empty, it's okay. So like paste and silk, silk screen, that won't be important. They're going to just ignore that anyways. Uh, but my edge cuts, yeah, I want all that. So uh, all these default settings should be fine. I'm just going to put them in a solar board files directory. Okay. And that's in... Um, I made this directory earlier that's in uh, the same directory I had the solar light kit files in. Uh, just a subdirectory of that. Then I'm going to click plot. Okay, so it's done the Gerber files. And then you also have to generate the drill files, which is important. Don't forget that step. I'm going to go ahead and click generate drill files. Um, everything should be fine the way it is, and same directory, and I'm going to just click Generate Drill File. Done. Okay. So now I've got the Gerbers and the Drill Files directory open here, and I'm just going to right-click that, and I'm going to zip those files, and that will be ready to upload to the PCB Fabricator. Now, a nice thing to do is if you do a Google search, you can find a um, online Gerber viewer. So I've got this open, and I'm just going to upload the Gerber file here. Uh, this is the solarboardfiles.zip, and we'll see what happens. All right, that's pretty quick. 
So you can see that's uploaded the file to the web. And it looks like we're expecting. I see the holes, I see the copper layer, I see the solder mask. And the silt screen. So all of that looks good. Um, bottom looks all right too. All right, then if you select layers, you can hide or show various layers. There's the board edge. And then the drill holes, you can see those. That's why you have to generate that drill file. Otherwise, it's just going to be pads. And solder mask, copper, silk screen, solder mask, copper. Yeah, all good. So yeah, that looks like we planned it. So I hope you found that enjoyable, and I hope that helps a bit. Okay, I almost forgot here. I wanted to show you how to also print it out onto your printer so you can get an idea of what the real life size of the board is. And it'll give you a much better idea of what you're looking at um, true to life. So what we'll do here, we're in the PCB viewer, of course, and we're going to hit file and then print. And then I've got included layers, uh, copper, front copper, and then uh, silt screen and edge cuts. So uh, the important part here is the scale. You want to make sure it's one to one, so it's actual size. And then when you go to uh, print, you want to also double check that it's not going to do any additional scaling. So here I've got to go to advance, and you can see it's scaling is off. That's good. That's what I want. I don't want to mess with the size of it. Uh, if it was set to fit to paper size, for example, it would enlarge it, and that wouldn't be right. So off is good. And yeah, so that's ready to print. And go ahead and print and that will give us a much better idea of what it is in real life so i will bring up the print here so this is the actual result of uh, the printout and you can see that the traces are the proper size and the drill holes look good just gives you a really good idea in comparison to the real life board there uh, I'm pretty satisfied with that, so I think it's about ready for me to send off to production. I will do an update when I get it back. And we'll see how it turns out. Hopefully it works okay, and hopefully it looks good. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I do hope this helps you. Um, I do put a bit of effort into it, and I hope, I hope somebody finds it useful anyways since I'm going through and relearning this process anyways, and um, it's good to take you along. Hopefully, hopefully you found something useful and, and figured out how to do things by this video. Anyways, keep on tinkering. Catch you later. Bye.